According to statistics from the Ministry of Planning and Investment, the healthcare market in general and the pharmaceutical market in Vietnam in particular are rapidly increasing, with a value exceeding 20 billion US dollars, accounting for about 6% of the GDP in 2022. According to forecasts by experts, scientists and relevant agencies, this figure is expected to increase to about 23.3 billion US dollars by 2025 and approximately 33.8 billion US dollars by 2030. The pharmaceutical market in Vietnam has also experienced strong growth and development with a total value of about 3.4 billion US dollars in 2015, rising to 7 billion US dollars in 2022, representing a compound annual growth rate of 10.6%. Domestic production accounts for approximately 45% of the total value of therapeutic drugs. Experts predict that by 2030, the total value of Vietnam's pharmaceutical market will reach around 13 billion US dollars, with pharmaceutical spending per capita of approximately 75 US dollars. This presents an opportunity for the pharmaceutical industry to become a regional hub for pharmaceuticals and healthcare. According to leaders of the Ministry of Planning and Investment, as of now, there are 228 pharmaceutical manufacturing plants in Vietnam meeting GDP standards, including seven vaccine manufacturing plants, six secondary vaccine packaging plants, and 77 medicinal material production plants. This indicates the development of Vietnam's pharmaceutical market. However, compared to the potential and demand, this figure is relatively modest and requires the participation of both domestic and international regions. Welcome to our program station Vietnam broadcast on VTC10. The healthcare market in general and the Vietnamese pharmaceutical market are considered very potential and have received a lot of attention from foreign investors in recent times. Today, to know more about this topic, we will have a conversation with Mr. Stefan Jacmin, the head of emerging markets at Stata. Thank you so much for coming to our show. So let's uh, head straight to the question. So the first one, we have the, um, I know that this is your returning trip to Vietnam. Yeah. And can you share with us a little bit more about your visit this time? And uh, what's your impression of our country? Well, I come very often to Vietnam. I mean, mm. the first time was in 2016. Mm. Uh, and since then, I've been coming nearly every quarter. Uh, yeah. So I can see the growth of the country. I can see the growth of the uh, healthcare environment. And I'm always impressed because I can see that this country is growing, the healthcare environment is growing uh, in line with the economic development of the country. Um, and, you know, a lot of examples translate that. Uh, the one uh, that I want to flag here is the growth of the pharmacy chains, for example. Where a few years ago, when I came here for the first time, they were just not existing. And now they are a big contributor of the retail, uh, the retail market. Yes. And since we have the ambition to be a leader in, uh, in consumer healthcare, uh, pharmacy chains are also very important for us. Yes. So that's an example of, you know, an evolution, very positive from the country. Yes, I'm happy to hear that there's a growth and a positive change. So um, as I know that startup Pima Fargo has been present in Vietnam through a, a joint venture ever since the year 2000. So over the past 20 years, the um, startup Pima Fargo has provided high quality generic pharmaceutical product to Vietnam market with very reasonable prices. So why did Stata decide to invest in pharmaceutical manufacturing in Vietnam? Well, it, it starts from a purpose. The purpose of Stata is caring for people's health as a trusted partner. And when you think about caring for people's health, you really think about how can you have an impact on people's health. And obviously, Vietnam is a natural choice because Vietnam is a very sizable market, large population, where we think we can have a very positive impact on people's mm -hmm. health and act as a trusted partner with the healthcare authorities. So that's why we selected, uh, we selected Vietnam. And obviously, we established a footprint uh, and we progressively uh, uh, grow the, uh, the, the presence that we have in the country in order to have uh, a good uh, distribution of the quality medicine to the population. 
Yes, right. So currently, the investment trend in the pharmaceutical sector in Vietnam has undergone quite significant changes, yep. focusing more on innovation, research and development, clinical trials, and technology transfer. Is this the uh, direction that startup Pima Falco has aimed for Vietnam? Absolutely. Or? It starts from this uh, purpose of caring for people's health and the vision to try to build uh, a manufacturing hub in Vietnam for Vietnam, but also for other countries outside of Vietnam, including mm -hmm. Western countries and Europe. And from this vision, we established a footprint. We now have two factories, 2,000 people working in the country. And uh, we truly uh, believe that uh, we can have an impact by transferring the technology, leveraging mm -hmm. that technology for the Vietnamese population, but also uh, for countries outside of Vietnam. Yes. So to know more about this, in your opinion, what are the challenges as well as the advantages in entering the pharmaceutical and healthcare pr product manufacturing here in Vietnam? Well, and this, how does it compare to other countries in the region? Right. Okay. So well, the, the advantages or the benefits, I would say, is that it's a very uh, stable and predictable environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I was telling you, uh, I came to Vietnam for the first time in 2016, and I can see the the stability and the predictability of the environment and the ecosystem when we operate, which is a very good factor and very welcoming factor for foreign investment, that's the number one. Uh, the number two is that we can see the support from the uh, healthcare authorities uh, that, uh, that, that is existing uh, and which allowed us uh, to and, and, and um, uh, gave us the optimism to invest into this country, which is why we have uh, built a second factory mm -hmm. on top of the first one that we acquired and this is why we are transferring the technologies and we are developing high quality medicine into this country. So I'd say we are completely accompanying the development of uh, Vietnam and the development of the healthcare industry in Vietnam. In August 2023, Stada Pime Farco inaugurated a new office in Ho Chi Minh City. Startup Palm Farco has been a reliable and essential pillar of the healthcare system in Vietnam for over 30 years. The company has ambitious plans for strong development in the future. Together with partners including suppliers and distributors, the dedicated team at Stada Pine Falco has been working tirelessly to ensure a stable drug supply, demonstrating commitment to the health and development of the people in Vietnam. Uh, definitely, uh, Stada is committed to Vietnam for many years, and uh, our focus over the last 10 years was establish the manufacturing base in Vietnam. We have two Euro GMP factories where we follow the exactly the same quality standards as anywhere in the world. We have been putting a lot of efforts into improving the quality, bringing more portfolio, transferring technology, and not only we are servicing for more than 90% our business by locally produced products, but at the beginning of 2024, we are planning to start exporting products to Europe from our Vietnamese factories. Uh, so normally we supporting companies for hard production in the textile, in the metal processing, in the electronic industry. But here we are talking about a very high quality production process. And uh, so it makes us really happy to prove that uh, also these really ambitious processes are possible in Vietnam. And uh, so it's really, it makes us really happy that also company uh, is contributing to the public health care system. So try to make available uh, really effective pharmaceuticals to normal people, to all of the people in Vietnam. And even more also can produce products in Vietnam who are really eligible also to the European market. And uh, so in all the ways uh, we really are willing and uh, happy to support Stada. The heart of Stada in Vietnam is located at the manufacturing plant in Tuy Hoa, Phu Yen province. The company produces billions of pills annually and has plans for strong future development. Stada's new plant in Vietnam has also been approved by European authorities to manufacture pharmaceuticals for the European market. 
Positive results in Stardust activities in Vietnam demonstrate a commitment to exporting high-quality made-in-Vietnam products with prestigious EU GMP certification to the global market, promoting the development of the pharmaceutical industry in Vietnam. In January 2024, Stada will have its first export shipment to Europe with the origin made in Vietnam. The development of Stada in Vietnam is compelling evidence that Vietnam is a convenient and suitable destination for high-value manufacturing in a promising industry. This also highlights the positive impact of the EVFTA on trade and investment development between Germany and Vietnam. Please share more about the journey of the first export shipment from Vietnam to a European market with the label Made in Vietnam. Well, I'd say that the, uh, the, the first export, which by the way will happen in, uh, in Q1 next year, January next year, right? Uh, is actually uh, the uh, example that proves that we are delivering high quality medicine in the country. It's in a way the result of this journey we started a few years ago. Um, as I said, building a footprint, transferring the technologies, bringing high quality products with exactly the same standard as the one that we have in Germany and Europe. And yes, we do deliver that for the Vietnamese population and for the Vietnamese patients for years already. The export to outside of Vietnam is just the extension of this towards other countries outside of Vietnam. But the Vietnamese population is already enjoying, I would say, the benefits of this high quality medicine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is directly to the next question. I know you mentioned it already, but is this a commitment that the Vietnamese people can get high quality medicinal uh, products that meets European standards right here in Vietnam? I'd say it's more than a commitment because mm. we're already doing it for a few years. We're applying in Vietnam the same standards as we do apply outside of Vietnam in our factories in Europe. Yes. Uh, we are just continuing and expanding this commitment, so to speak, by mm. using this high quality medicine uh, and exporting them to more markets and therefore making Vietnam a global manufacturing hub. Yes. All right. So, as I know, from 2000 until now, on average, each year Vietnam has had to spend over 300 million US dollars to import uh, modern drugs and yeah. over 70 million US dollars to import pharmaceutical raw materials as well as uh, auxiliary materials. So, experts say that if the import of raw materials is encouraged yeah. and the import of finished drugs is gradually reduced, then the socio economic efficiency will be higher and not also not only creating more jobs for the workers but also reducing the unemployment and the dependence on the foreign pharmaceutical markets. Is this the um, aim that startup Pima Fargo has for Vietnam in the future? Well it's not only for the future, we're already doing it now because in essence this is encouraging local production. Uh, this is exactly what we are doing for a few years. Uh, and as I was telling you just before, right, uh, we'll be doing this for a few years in the two factories we have in the Thuy Hoa uh, region, mm -hmm. therefore indeed creating 2,000 jobs in this country. Mm -hmm. So what the experts that you are referring to are saying is completely valid. It goes in line with the commitment we have for the country uh, in Vietnam. Yes, I'm very happy to hear that. As a investor, as a German investor, what recommendations do you have for the Vietnamese agencies and uh, sectors in supporting foreign businesses to invest in the pharmaceutical industry in Vietnam? Well, I'd say, I'd say to continue uh, building this very stable uh, and predictable environment, I think it's very beneficial for foreign investors and it's something we clearly value, I would say the first uh, thing. The second thing is that I can see that the, uh, the government and the healthcare uh, authorities are truly encouraging mm -hmm. uh, the development of the healthcare uh, industry and that's extremely positive and that's something we want to be part of uh, and as a key player. Uh, the opportunities, I would say, is probably to keep upskilling the workforce uh, and training the people uh, because that's all benefit for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I would also add trying to further evolve the registration timeline for the medicine in order to bring drugs and high-quality products to the uh, Vietnamese patients faster, basically. 
the faster the timeline, the faster we can bring these medicines in the hands of the people that need it. Thank you so much for your time and your insightful sharings for our show, Station Vietnam. Absolutely. Thank you, and I appreciate the invitation. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you, uh, all the viewers from Station Vietnam. It was a real pleasure to be with you. Thank you.